So today's mission, finally, finally, is to go and try to rescue Bob. As a reminder, it was ages ago, ages ago, four years, 122 days ago, that we landed Bob on Duna. So he's still sitting there, right over here, just chilling, having done a little bit of science, um, and then transmitted it over. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, poor guy. I, holy crap, he's been outside for like over a year now because of reasons. Um, I, I moved him outside of his capsule to take some screenshots for, uh, you know, the pre-stream hype and different things like that. And apparently I forgot to put him back in. <laughs> and here's the crazy thing. Since I took those screenshots, I have left the game go by for like a year and a half to make sure that the... Um, Kerbin and Duna were in the right position. So he's literally been sitting outside his pod for like a year and a half. <laughs> because I need to make sure that Kerbin um, was here relative to Duna. You want about that, that 40, 45 degree angle between the two, which for Kerbin to Duna is the sweet spot uh, for the transfer window. So, um, yeah, so he's fine. He's fine. His suit probably smells a little bit funny because he hasn't changed out of it for years. But yeah, he's been on Duna for four and a half years at this point, and it would be really great to bring him home. So we're going to see if we can do that. <laughs> Got some subs coming in here. That's great. All right, let's 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 go ahead and start designing our ship then, if we can do that. Poor Bob. Yeah, poor Bob. What a little guy. Viper, thank you very much for your one-year twitch anniversary. We've got Sir X with a 25-month resub as well. Uh, Chef Spartan coming in with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you very much. Unstable Voltage resubbing with two months. Kitten74 with the resub at six months. Resto with Twitch Prime coming in. Second month of Twitch Prime, which I believe you have to do manually every month. So I appreciate that. Gamer Dad Joe, thank you very much for the eight-month resub. And a few more before that as well. Hey, Duduck! All right, so... This vessel. So what we have to do is we have to figure out what our plan with this vessel is. Um, you know, are we planning for something that is literally going to return to Kerbin and therefore do a re-entry? So we got a plan for that. Probably. Um, is it going to be a fully automated ship? Which, um, you know, so something like, for example, just put in the Mark 1 command pod and then to make the trip to Duna, you know, just stick a, stick a Probodovidan on top, you know, and that's quite good. Downside to this, however, is the fact that we need to make sure we've got a signal connection for the Probodovidan, right? And I don't believe currently, let me check, I don't believe we have any kind of satellite orbiting Duna. Now, we could bring some. What we could do is as part of our payload, we could bring a couple of satellites that then get um, dropped in orbit of Duna to ensure that we've got a signal connection back home. Actually, hold on, I do have a satellite in polar orbit around Duna. Ooh. Now, now, just one's not necessarily a guarantee of 100% perfect signal, but that's pretty good. Nice high orbit as well. Well, that is very good. Now, I assume, let me check. I assume this guy can act as a relay. I don't know if it says that here. I mean, I can have it show the comm net. But, oh, it's definitely relaying, because it's actually, Bob is relaying through there. That's why you can still watch a little bit of YouTube, but, you know, you can only watch it, like, 240p. It's very, very unappealing. Okay, so this is a relay satellite in polar orbit around Duna. That's very helpful. Mm-hmm. Hope Quill accidentally crashes the rescue mission to the satellite. Well, that, or we, like, you know, we're trying to land near Bob. What if we land right on top of Bob? I have done that before with a, um, with a rendezvous. I have landed directly on top of the person or the ship I was trying to rendezvous with. So I think it's going to be okay if we plan something sort of vaguely like this, right? So we're going to have the thing that comes home. Oh yeah, the thermal is down here. The thing that comes home is going to be this, uh, plus obviously some parachutes, which is still under utility. Oops, that's too big. So we want that. Um, this is pretty light. I don't think we'd need to worry about any sort of uh, actual drogue shoots. Actually, that is sufficient. Um, but you know what? For safety, what I might do is throw a couple of drogues on here. So, hey, we got a first tip of the day. Uh, for safety, might throw a couple of drogues on there. Just in case we come in too steeply, uh, we can deploy the drogues at a much higher speed uh, which and higher altitude, which will bleed off a lot more speed, which will definitely make the final shoot be sufficient for what we've got left over here. Who dat? That's Terje! Hello! Here's some funds for the rescue team! Hashtag Team Bob. Thank you very much, Terje! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright. So, 
This is the thing that's going to be landing on Kerbin. I think that's pretty okay. Um, we could throw, you know, a little external battery, a little solar panel on here or something like that uh, to give us a little bit more control authority on the way down, especially if we've got a probe core. I think what I'm going to do is right underneath the probe core, I'm going to put the battery in there. Uh, so not the 1K. Yeah, just that. Adds more weight to this, but I think we're looking pretty okay. All right, I'm okay with that. So it'll have lots of battery power for the descent when I do the lock to retrograde, which will be helpful because again, we might come in a slightly higher speed. We may be a little bit more concerned. Good. Okay, so the next step is the part that's gonna get from Duna, presumably from Duna orbit back to Kerbin. Uh, so what we really want is, where's the Delta B maps? So I wanna get a general idea of how much Delta V we need to go from Duna back to Kerbal. So from Duna, low orbit, say, we need about 600, 750, You know, surprisingly little, surprisingly little Delta V. Is this, is this map accurate? What about this one here? Yeah, if we have something like 1700 Delta V, call it something like 2000 to make sure that um, if you know we've got an unoptimal transfer window or I F up some of the maneuvers or something like that It seems to me like 2000 Delta V should be able to get us from Duna low orbit To Kerbin and of course our Kerbin re-entry is going to be purely done via um, Like arrow breaking right? We're just gonna enter the atmosphere and that'll be it So we don't need to enter orbit around Kerbin or do anything of the sort. That's pretty lightweight Now out of curiosity if I were to go and say um Put in a decoupler here. Nope, just this one here. Uh, put in a, a liquid fuel tank. Not the Mark Zero. Say the Mark One. And let's say a nuclear, a nuclear engine over here. We end up with 2700 Delta V. Nuclear engines tend to have very minimal thrust to weight ratio, right? So they, they thrust very slowly, but very efficiently. And actually, this is a light enough design that um, it, it's still going to generate 0.91 thrust to weight and generate about 2700 delta V. Now, we are going to have to extend this a wee bit because, first of all, nuclear engines burn long and they tend to burn relatively hot. So it is important to have um, some radiators over here. Uh, just... Can I not snap? I guess not, right, because of reasons. They won't snap to the engine directly, but they will transfer their heat to say over here. So if we get a couple of small radiators attached to this to bleed off the excess heat being made from this, that should be fine. And of course, we need to worry about power generation as well. Um, and for something like that, you know what? I'm kind of tempted to do just something like this, because it'll look kind of cool if we extend these out, right? Vroom. Like that. And actually, most of our Delta V is still there. Um, retract this. Certainly, if we're going to be using a probe core to fly this thing, we're going to need an antenna back home, even when Bob is in, because Bob's not a pilot. If we want to use SAS kind of mechanics, I mean, we can do it because we'll have mech jeb, uh, but I want to still, you know, in theory, enable the core to do everything it's supposed to. Um, and yeah, so we're going to need some sort of communications antenna. This doesn't have to have relay capabilities. Uh, it should probably have relatively long range. Um, I don't know if we need the turbo long one, but yeah, maybe. I mean, it's really gonna have relays, but there's a possibility that, oh, that's really big, isn't it? You know what, because we have the big high level station, I'm betting this is actually going to be sufficient. So if we say tuck it in there and extend it out, what does that look like? That looks like that. You know what, I bet you that's gonna do us just fine. In worst case scenario, uh, we don't need very much range to reach the satellite that's in orbit around Duna. Um, it's just the only question of in, in the in-between times, but I'm willing to bet this is going to be way more than enough. So we're going to call this like the Duna Rescue. Because it's pretty descriptive. You know, you should, you should grab someone from the Extra Life charity page. That's what we should name this, this design after. 
or I can name the design this, but then name the actual ship instance something else. But uh, no, I think this will be okay. So I think we were around here, and we're gonna call this the Hogan. It's gonna be the Hogan. Excellent. That's for Dan Hogan, someone who donated hundred dollars to the Extra Life Charity Marathon. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So that's been saved. So this is what's going to get us from low Duna orbit back home. And I think that'll work. Now the problem is, what's the stage that's going to get us off Duna's surface? And I think for that, what we're going to need, because we're going to need A, more Delta V, and B, we're going to need um, quite a bit more oomph, because the um, the nuclear engine, although this is the thrust weight in Kerbin, um uh, gravity. Duna's a lot less, so in theory, you know, we'd actually get good thrust to weight over here. Um, there's not much of an atmosphere on Duna, so the atmospheric delta V is not bad. That being said, this isn't quite going to cut it, because to go into low Duna orbit, we're going to need about 1500 delta V. Okay? That's to get us from the surface of Duna into orbit. We're going to need about that much. And then, of course, we're going to need something for the actual landing, too. But... Like, in theory, we may just be fine and happy just designing the ascent vehicle over here. One question I need to answer before we go any further. Do rocket packs work on Duna? I mean, they always work, but can Bob get off the ground with his rocket pack? I think the answer is yes, but it'll tell us something about, you know, because Bob's going to be able to get into this thing. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Oh, the Delta V's hiding. I will take a look at that soon. So, uh, no, not you. I wanna... Nope, not the flag. Not that flag. There we go. Hello, Bob. We need you to test your, uh, jetpack, please. Uh, sorry. Wrong button. My bad. Ah, oh, poor Bob! Okay. Okay, answer is yes. He can take off with his jetpack. Good, 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 good. I'm gonna put you back inside here, buddy. Where's your door? Oh, there it is. Do the moonwalk! Well, it's the Duna walk, but that's okay. Dun, dun, dun. Grab. Board. Alright, good. So, uh, Space Center. <laughs> All this time Bob was standing in the middle of the Yeah. He's been out there, like, mostly he's been inside. He's been, so he's been on Duna for four and a half years. Well, that's not true. It took him, like, a year to get there. So he's been on Duna for, like, three and a half years. And for about two and a half years of that, he's been inside his, his ship. But about a year ago, I, I took him out to take some screenshots, and I forgot to put him back in. Oops. Okay, so the fact that Duna's gravity is low enough that Bob can jetpack up means... Really? We lost the Hogan here? Uh, load means that we don't have to worry about having things all the way down. Although, for convenience, it's probably a good idea if we do stick at least a basic ladder, say here, just to give them, like, something else to grab onto. There we go. Just a bigger, bigger target. Okay. So, yeah, I made good look use of the lunchbox. That's true. So, like, I'm tempted to do something like this. Okay, let's say we threw on some decouplers, uh, not those huge ones, these will be fine, uh, let's say mirrored, let's say we did something like this, um, threw on some FL-800 tanks, like so, um, and then most likely, most likely, all we'll need are the carrier engines, because again, there's not much of an atmosphere on Mars, so that's going to be okay. For takeoff, at least, we would like, on uh, takeoff on, on Kerbin? We'd very much at least like some um, some nose cones on there. It's not necessarily necessary the whole way, but it should be okay. So there's plenty of Delta V, especially on Duna. And especially, there's nothing stopping us from, say, running all the engines simultaneously here. For an even bigger boost if we want. Um, do we want to do any asparagusing? You know, leave things a little bit off balance with the um, liquid fuel to oxidizer ratio. But it might not be a bad idea actually. All right. But now, if we look at the staging, right? 
We still have 2,500 for a return, and we have 1,900 for a takeoff. This should be able to reach low Duna orbit and then return all the way to Kerbin with Delta V to spare. However, this will not be sufficient to land us on Kerbin. I mean, especially since we don't actually have, you know, landing gear. Um, but I think it's actually not a bad start. We're going to want to strut this up just a little bit. More struts, always more better. So we do something like that. And that's probably sufficient, although I kind of feel like throwing some struts onto the bottom like that too. More struts, more better. So then we have to actually talk about what what is going to land us. Now, it's quite nice. On Duna, you can land primarily with just parachutes. Um, although I think this is going to be heavy enough that just parachutes isn't going to do the job. Still, it can really help. The problem is this. Oh yeah, my head's still in the way of the Delta V calculations. I think I'll just move the Delta V window. Um, the problem is this. We need a fair amount of control for our descent. It's not just a question of landing anywhere on Duna. We're actually going to have to probably enter a polar orbit around Duna, wait until we're properly going to pass over Bob's landing site, then descend and um, have some amount of control authority. Although, if we do the somewhat more inefficient descent, where you basically kill all your horizontal delta V above the site and then just drop down, that's relatively accurate, although then you really don't have a whole lot of atmosphere and an opportunity to use that. I'm not so much worried about re-entry burn-up on Duna because it is so, like, thinly atmosphered. So, so I'm not sure. I mean, we may want to have some parachutes for assisted descent, but it's really not the most significant part of the, uh, the battle plan. But, we are, the stage we're going to design now is basically going to be the Dunian deorbit stage, which really needs about 1500 delta V. If we're in low orbit, then the amount of delta V you need to break out of low orbit and land gently is the exact opposite of what you need to take off. So again, about 1500 delta V, um, plus a little bit more to spare because our descent probably will be more... Um, cautious than optimal, and we'll probably have to make a, some adjustments on the way down, so we try to land near Bob to minimize how much walking he does. So it'd be nice if we allocated about 2,000 Delta V for the actual landing. Now, I'm kind of tempted to just sort of kind of do a little bit more of this. Right? If we do radial decoupler like this, and yeah, rather than copy it, let me just go and do one of those. Copy that bit. Copy that bit, and then grab all these and say, put that over there. Um, and create a new stage that isn't all crazy sauce. You guys go there. You guys go there. Decouple, decouple like that. Well, that's not bad, right? 1700, I wanted a little bit more. Although, um, I think what might help here, actually, is let's say we use these engines on the outside as part of the descent, and then sort of, um, it's not exactly asparagus, but something like that. Right, then you get more thrust to weight, which is going to make it easier to control things on the descent. So, I mean, this is a big, chunky kind of thing, but it's not impossible for this to work. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take this, and yeah, I'm going to bring it down as much as possible here. Because, at some point, we got to fit in landing gear. And the one thing that's going to be kind of annoying is we have very little baby landing gear. Which is kind of annoying. But... That's as low as it can go. There we go. All right, something like this. So um, these four, these quad boosters on the side, will get dropped partway through our descent. Now, that's not exactly that. That should be more than enough delta V. I do want a little bit more to pad, and I think the thing, the way to do it, will be to actually throw in some conventional shoots as well uh, during part of the descent, assuming that we don't really need the control authority the same way. 
you know, if we're kind of on target or something. Um, so under utility, I'm going to want maybe... Just to say some of those and then some of those. I mean, we are adding weight, sure, but it's probably okay. So let's get the drogues to be separate. And then, all right, so then we launch. Oh, did I not? Oh, I didn't. Hang on. I didn't stage that quite right. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Okay, all the bottom engines are going, and the outer fuel should go into the middle. Why is it showing me... Because we dropped these guys on stage 5. How come it's not showing me any more Delta V on stage 4? Not realizing there's going to be fuel in there. Is it possible that MechJab, which is still currently in beta for this patch, isn't quite calculating those numbers correctly? Might be entirely possible. But this is the sort of thing I'm thinking for the descent. Uh, Delta V calculator is part of a mod, part of MacJab. I the, the core game should have a Delta V calculator because it's actually critical for a lot of things. Um, it does seem like the one thing I, I do think the main game is right in being generally minimal, but I'm not sure that a Delta V calculator is something that is so minimal that it shouldn't be put in. Yeah, I'm using MechJab for the Delta V as opposed to Kerbal Engineer. You know, maybe Kerbal Engineer would be more accurate or not, or, you know, could try both at this structure, but this juncture, but I think we're going to be okay. Um, I'm going to go and strut these sideways like that, too. Get this nice and, nice and tight in there. Okay, I'm going to say that this is hopefully sufficient for our landing. I don't know. We'll find out. Let me go and... Um, Retract those in there. Uh, we are also going to need solar panels. Um, doo -doo 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 I think I'm going to go and stick a couple here. Those will burn up on... Um, oh, actually, even going into Dunian atmosphere, we'll need to be able to retract our solar panels. Let's do that. If I recall correctly, the nuclear uh, engine takes a lot of solar, a lot of power to run. Not convinced it's going to be quite enough. put you here and extend you. Do you intersect things? A eh, little bit. Yeah. Maybe you'll intersect each other, but that's probably okay. There you go. Fair amount of power. It's probably good. I don't know. We can run some tests and see. Go into main settings and changes. You can adjust the fuel tank's priority. Um, or fuel pump. Yes, that's right. That is true. Um, I do know that the mech jabs and things like that really don't calculate based on that. But that is something you can do as of 1.2. I think we're going to hold off. All right. I'm going to cross my fingers and say that this will probably land us on the moon. Or on Mars. I don't know. Um, actually, I'm wondering. Because these are going to get dropped. I, actually, I think I need to move my parachutes to the, uh, the central part. Whoops. Undo. Delete you. Do this. Do this. And almost have, certainly have to take another look at the uh, staging after, but... Undo. I like parachutes are sometimes a little trickier to grab than I give them credit for. 
Alright, let's do something like that instead. 